Joe Varden joins us. Joe, we didn't get to hear your question. What was your question to Greg Popovich? Well, hi, Dan. Hi, Good to see you, as always. Um, my question was not to Greg Popovich. It was to Damian Lillard. Uh, and essentially, I asked him what it was like for him to have to, to having uh, watched his colleagues in 14 and 16 uh, blow these teams out, roll through these tournaments, go undefeated, and then now getting into Olympic play and, and having to experience the other side of it. And Dame actually gave a, a thoughtful answer. He talked about how this was, this was very different, um, acknowledging watching those, those blowouts and all those wins. Um, but then he said, you know, I've also seen Team USA be challenged in the past, maybe not lose two in a row. Um, and then, you know, Greg jumped in uh, and, and, and started to address uh, me and, and the question that, that was not directed at him. Um, and it goes back to uh, a much calmer, I guess, exchange. Not, not that that was, um, you know, wild or anything last night, but a much calmer exchange we had after Nigeria when I was asking about um, basically American exceptionalism when it comes to basketball after, you know, they had just gone through what was arguably the, the largest upset in international basketball history. Uh, the spread was 29 points and uh, just asked what this meant to him. Um, but Dame Lillard wasn't available. Uh, after that Nigeria game. And so, you know, and they didn't practice the next day. So there's no media availability then. So this was our one bite at the apple to ask other players what this is like. Um, and then coach jumped in and, and uh, started, you know, down that path. But so you're trying to interject something. What, what, what is he having a problem with, with you trying to interject? Well, you know, I've been covering this team, um, I keep saying for two summers, right? Because we, everything of course was, was interrupted last year. Um, but he's been, he has been saying over and over that, you know, the world's gotten better, which is true. There's more pros on all these teams, which is true. Um, but he's saying, as we heard in the clip that, that it is not true uh, that there, that in the past there were all these blowouts and it's, it's right there, Dan, in the game notes. Uh, in the wonderful game notes written by Team USA uh, PR director Craig Miller, th the average margin of victory uh, in the 2016 Olympics was like 30, 29 or 30. And then in the 14 FIBA World Cup, it was like 29, 30, 32, somewhere in there. Uh, and then in, in the 2016 gold medal game, Team USA literally beat Serbia by 30 points. And that's what I was saying. Like he, he started down that path again and, and like, you know, cause not everybody's watching every interaction we have, but he was saying something that just isn't altogether accurate. And, and he was going to use it, you know, I think to make a point. And so I was just saying, no, that's not true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I, I tried to say, to bring up the thing about the, the average margin of victory and, and, you know, but I, I know it didn't get picked up on. on what is the level of concern for this team? So we're trying to figure that out. Um, you know, the, the latest thing is that they're saying that, well, you know, our guys aren't in shape, which is apparent. You know, for instance, Bradley Beal was, was standing, you know, doubled over at, at one point last night, and, and they haven't been good late in the fourth quarter, um, which suggests to a, condition, uh, a conditioning issue. But, you know, five of their seven rotation players played at least one round of playoffs and, and a couple of them went into the second round. So I don't know if I, I don't get that. And, and to a larger degree, like. But Australia's in shape and Nigeria's in shape, but team USA is not in shape. Yeah. So, so that one's a problem. Um, but okay. To, to answer your question, how big is the concern? I mean, there are, I guess, questions about the roster. Like it's a smaller team. Uh, it's a team that's supposed to score a ton of points. Um, you know, they're getting killed on the glass right now and, uh, they are being exposed, uh, defensively, but, you know, in teams past, like if, if there was a, maybe a small liability here or there, you know, the Americans have been so mighty overall that, that you could, they just sweep past that. And, and for, for a reason that we don't know yet, the margin of error has shrunk dr dramatically. So when you say how much concern is there? I think we've reached a point where the Americans could win the gold medal and, and they might very well, but, but we actually don't know. And I think that's the first time in quite a while um, in an Olympics, 
uh, setting that, that we can say that. So it's either going to be a really exciting tournament or a really nerve wracking tournament, depending on your point of view. Biggest threat to the United States in the Olympics is who? I don't know that you can say any one particular team. I mean, they open up against France, who already beat them uh, in the in the China uh, World Cup two years ago. That's a tough one. Um, but, you, you know, this is the kind of team that, on a, on a bad night, Luka Doncic and, and the other four Slovenians could just show up and beat them. I mean, Luka could go off for 50 uh, and do what he's done to the Clippers. And, you know, in, in one game, it's not a seven-game series. So I think there are threats throughout this tournament. Um, we'll see how much better they get when the three guys who are in the finals join up. And, um, and, I, and I do think Kevin Durant, you know, needs to find his legs a little bit because he's getting good shots. He's 10 of 30 in two games. Um, you know, so I think if, when he gets to be uh, start knocking some of those down, we'll start to see the results flip. But again, it, the margin of error is almost almost gone, which is remarkable. Joe, I was surprised that Durant played um, for the Olympics. Um, I don't know if he needs more playing time or needs more rest, given what he just went through and what he did a Herculean task in the playoffs. How surprised are you that Durant is playing? Yeah, I was I was shocked, and um, I wrote about this in the in the run up to the start of exhibition play in the early part of camp. Um, I think obviously you're surprised, and I'm surprised. Most of the people who do our jobs are are surprised, um, but the people who know Kevin just talk about like this sort of um, single affinity for the game. And I know it's a cliche, like oh, I love the game, but I think he actually kind of lives it. And I also think mm. that what has happened to him over the last couple of years with these terrible injuries has, has sort of driven home the point of wanting to do everything he can while he still can. So, you know, assuming this tournament turns around and they, they write the ship, um, Kevin will probably go down as the greatest uh, American Olympic basketball player, which is, I don't know if he cares about that kind of stuff, but it's, it's going to be uh, something that, that goes to him. Steve, keep mixing it up there, Joe. We, we appreciate your time. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, and that's uh, Joe Varden. He's a senior NBA writer for The Athletic, covering Team USA at the Olympics. Team USA loses to Nigeria, loses to Australia, and they've got Argentina coming up tonight.